Hey guys, and welcome to the Working Money Channel. So Massimo posted this tapering in quotes. This has to do with the US economy. Retweeting out Garrick Morin's tweet here. Fed has been talking tough about fighting inflation in the future since last June. Gold has been hit on every hot inflation number since then. As of last Wednesday, the Fed's monetization of the debt has not slowed, so you guys can see the uptick there. What happens when they say they're tapering is they uh, pull back on uh, asset purchases. However, this chart demonstrates the total assets, less eliminations from consolidation, and this was the Wednesday level, so from just last week. Um, you know, we've got the crypto market taking a bit of a slide, and uh, I mean, we are going to see these ups and downs. This is XRP on the daily. We can see that, although it did hit a dollar two, and uh, you know, we were getting very excited that we were going to see levels above a dollar. It has slid back down to about 89 cents. Um, you know, it's par for the course when you bring up Bitcoin here. We can also see Bitcoin did see a bit of a decline as of yesterday. Right now, Bitcoin hovering around $49,000. $200. However, we are still making these higher lows, right? Higher lows and hopefully, ultimately, we will continue to see that trend move to the upside and um, I'm hoping for a $58,000, $59,000 Bitcoin, which would bring us in and around this level, in and around here, topping out at former resistance from back in May. We can see that level shelved out over here before sliding back down as well. So let's hope that we see it come up in and around here. Of course, Bitcoin, uh, all eyes are on Bitcoin. Bitcoin is going to be the biggie. Getting up to that point, 702 is really going to be uh, the make it break it situation for Bitcoin. And uh, you know, I've talked on this channel a little bit. Some are positive on the Bitcoin trend. Others, not so positive. This coming from Bond Crypt XRP, experts predicting strict regulations and measures and that Bitcoin as a result could crash in 2022. So this has to do with a financial professor at Sussex University, Carol Alexander. Let me just read you guys a little bit of this. All in all, the world's biggest cryptocurrency, Bitcoin, has grown at a pretty nice rate this year. Since the beginning of 2021, the digital currency has increased by about 70%, bringing the total worth of the crypto market to $2 trillion. But recent price volatility and increased regulatory scrutiny might dim Bitcoin's prospects. And so uh, with regards to the, here's just some, uh, just a little bit of uh, history on the price and how it has rallied. The fact that in 2018, we did see it fall to $3,000 per BTC. If you guys were here, you'll definitely remember that. I'll link this in the description if you guys wanna read the full article. But right in here, Carol Alexander, a finance professor at Sussex University, told the outlet that Bitcoin will crash to $10,000 in 2022, wiping out all of its gains over the previous year and a half. And here's what Carol Alexander says, if I were investor now, I would think about coming out of Bitcoin soon because its price will probably crash next year. She said, adding that now Bitcoin is more like a toy to investors than an asset. So an interesting perspective here, a toy versus an asset. Of course, there are all these uh, ETFs that are uh, looking to be approved. I mean, there are some that are already approved elsewhere in the world. However, we really have not seen a majority that uh, a Bitcoin product such as an ETF should be approved. This is still kind of a fringe theory. And so, you know, um, Bitcoin price is going to react accordingly. And, uh, you know, this is what we've seen. So in some ways, still an immature market. In other ways, we are slowly getting there. Uh, I still think, you know, the technicals on the chart are still demonstrating that we could see new highs for Bitcoin in 2022. That would bring the altcoin market up as well with it. Um, we've also got this. Let's not forget, guys, celebrities like Gene Simmons are also posting on Twitter. Former U.S. Treasury Secretary Rosie Rios on crypto investing in 2022. The train has left the station. I reported on this uh, just last week. This article was from uh, just before Christmas. But, uh, you know, the point I wanted to make here, Gene Simmons is also jumping on the train you know, tweeting out these types of positive tweets. And if you guys remember, uh, this article from CNBC does actually mention that she is on Ripple's board. So uh, great exposure for that. Uh, Crypto Eddie here posting this, a quick clip of Rosie Rios talking about blockchain and crypto trends in 2022. Listen to what she had to say. You were appointed to Ripple's board of directors. As we near the end of 2021, Rosie, I have to ask you, what trends should we keep an eye out in the new year? What are your predictions for, let's say, blockchain crypto space in 2022? I, you know, look, I mean, the future is already here, right? It's one of my favorite phrases that I use all the time. The train has already left the station. I think blockchain technology will always be here, not just because of crypto, but other applications as well, whether it's NFTs, whether it's, it's uh, fractional ownership of real estate, whether it's art, 
all these other applications are there. So for me, you know, I, I think this world of innovation and technology has already arrived. It's really, you know, how we use it responsibly, how we really think about it to, to better our lives. So there you go, Rosie Rios also just hitting that point home, right? The technology is here, blockchain technology is really going to transform the world and uh, it, it wasn't mentioned in this clip, but the underlying notion that she is on Ripple's board, I think just does speak volumes to where that company is going to go with regards to this space where the XRP cryptocurrency is also going to go. It solves a problem, we're in court right now, but that is going to change, I think, in quarter one of 2022. Moving along though, guys, I wanna bring you this from Wrath of Kahneman Note. This is the first ex-border arrangement on India's UPI, and it is with Ripple users. He retweeted out uh, T. Holbedek XRP's tweet here, Ripple customer Indus InBank partners with National Payments Corporation India to send money to Thailand through Ripple customer D-Money via the UPI, or India's real-time payments network. So that is big because we know uh, remittance payments huge in that part of the world. Indus Int Bank has joined hands with the National Payments Corporation of India, or NPCI, uh, for offering real-time cross-border remittances to India using the UPI's IDs for its money transfer operation partners. With this initiative, Indus Int Bank has become the first Indian bank to go live on UPI for cross-border payments and NRI remittances. So they are the very first ones to go live. Uh, under this arrangement, the MTOs will be using the Indus Int Bank channel to connect with NPCI's UPI payment systems for validation and cross-border payment settlement into beneficiary accounts. Indus Int Bank has started off with Thailand for foreign inward remittances. So uh, Thailand is that first corridor for them. D-Money, a Thailand-based financial solutions provider offering money transfers and foreign currency exchanges services. We know D-Money, also a Ripple partner. Uh, customers using D-Money's website can easily transfer funds by just adding a beneficiary's UPI ID. Indus Int Bank also plans to add more partners in various other countries for cross-border payments via UPI in the near future. So this is just the beginning, guys. Uh, we we are going to see more corridors, I think, through these guys. Inward remit only, as Wrath of Kahneman puts, so D-Money can send uh, INR into UPI accounts via Indus Int's connection, and D-Money Thailand is also an ODL user supporting SME. So, very exciting news. Uh, D we got D-Money in here, Ripple Partner, ODL user, as I uh, did not mention. However, uh, great news here. Wanted to thank the Wrath of Kahneman and T. Holbedek for posting that. I got another one here, guys, from XRP Crypto Wolf. A shout out to Solo for not freezing XRP holders tokens like Vagabond. Now, I don't have uh, much experience with Vagabond. However, Solo here, uh, not freezing out XRP holders. So great news there if uh, any of you guys participated in that Solo snapshot on Christmas Eve. And uh, guess who actually liked the tweet here? XRP Crypto Wolf also tweeting this out. David Schwartz agrees with me. Just agreeing with this notion. These are uh, David Schwartz's likes on his uh, Twitter page. Which XRP Ledger products are able to freeze tokens? Start calling them out so they won't get away with it. And so David Schwartz liked that. All XRP Ledger projects should black hole their project to eliminate the protocol to freeze people's tokens. Um, so we know David Schwartz's opinion, obviously XRP Crypto Wolf calling these guys out. And uh, for those of you guys uh, who participated in the solo snapshot successfully, uh, I wanna congratulate you guys. You will be getting solo tokens next month. I uh, wanted to keep moving here, guys. Another one from Wrath of Kahneman. This is a weekly report and I have the report up here from uh, Bank Med Suisse. Okay, this is the full PDF if you guys are interested in that full report. They mentioned Ripple a few times here. Uh, you know, some with regards to the lawsuit, which is just kind of of reporting on the facts of what is going on. However, they also mention them in this capacity. So here's the weekly report from Bank Med Suisse, highlights XRP as an energy efficient alternative to Ethereum. The report is also noteworthy, maybe more so for a succinct, clear overview of the Ripple versus SEC case, as we know. Uh, so, however, ETH2 is expected to use about 99% less energy than the current mainnet following the switch to proof of stake. Another low energy alternative is Ripple, and so this is the highlighted part here, which uses about 28,440 joules per transaction. Ripple says that for every million transactions on its network, the same amount of energy could have powered a light bulb for 79,000 hours. For the same number of transactions, the energy used by BTC could power a light bulb for 4.51 billion hours. For this reason, Ripple claims that XRP is 57,000 times more efficient than BTC. So uh, just outlining that from the Bank Med Suisse uh, report, the most recent report that they have published on their website, and it is here for you guys uh, to check out if you guys are interested. Wanted to keep going. XRP Crypto Quebec posted this. 
we already had the inclination that Bitcoin was created by the CIA. We also know that David Schwartz was contracted by the CIA in the, I believe it was late 80s or 90s. And we don't really have too much information on what was going on there, but considering David Schwartz a cryptographer, we probably have a pretty good idea of what he was doing for them. So CIA involved in crypto goes back further and runs deeper than previously known. So we, we know all that information. What I wanted to bring up here was something else that I found interesting. So there's a Q and A portion uh, of an appearance from a former C or sorry, from the CIA director, William Burns. Uh, so he was asked if the agency will be looking into cryptocurrency in light of recent ransomware incidences. So just to give you guys some context here, here is William Burns, director of the Central Intelligence Agency since March of 2021. So uh, just this year is when he started. We also discovered from Burns's response that the CIA is more involved than previously supposed and has been for some time. So here is the quote, my predecessor had started, so this is a quote from Burns, my predecessor had started this, but has set in motion a number of different projects focused on cryptocurrency and trying to look at second or third order consequences, as well as helping with our colleagues in other parts of the United States government to provide solid intelligence on what we're seeing as well. So it sounds as though William Burns has come out and said people before him at the CIA have been involved in different cryptocurrency projects. And I mean, there's a lot to suggest that uh, Bitcoin was created by the government. The rabbit hole runs deep. And for those of you guys interested in that, uh, I brought up this other article, an older article from February of 2019. For those of you guys uh, who believe in this theory, National Security Agency created Bitcoin. They did create part of it for sure. So I'm just gonna go over the headlines here and I will link this in the description. This I thought was interesting. I didn't know this point actually. Satoshi Nakamoto actually means central intelligence. So the word Satoshi, you can see here, intelligent. And Nakamoto family history, the Japanese origin means central origin. So central intelligence, could that be a clever little uh, Easter egg in there? Number three, we have some discussion about how cryptocurrency could benefit the government and DOJ cyber crimes prosecution explains how Bitcoin helps the FBI catch criminals. So some interesting information here for those of you guys who want to understand this further. I thought it was interesting though that uh, William Burns's response with regards to the CIA and their uh, inclusion in uh, cryptocurrency focused projects goes on way before him. Anyway, wanted to thank XRP Crypto Quebec for posting that. And so we got this new financial system that seems to be at the precipice of being rolled out. Of course, 2022 is going to be a very, very interesting year for crypto adoption. Well, this is what Tony Edwards said from the Thinking Crypto podcast. I'm by no means a conspiracy theorist, but I do look at macro trends, life changes, narratives, and I can't help but think that world governments are using this virus situation to crash the existing system to move us to the CBDC system. Well, Tony, Welcome to the party. Full tokenization of fiat, which will improve liquidity, more velocity, stimulus payments, etc. What's interesting is CBDCs will use blockchain tech, which originated from Bitcoin. It makes you think if Satoshi Nakamoto is a government entity, which I had just outlined in this previous segment here. So Tony's catching on, listening to the recent Ray Dalio interview and how he talks about empires, currency, economies, etc. It seems crypto and blockchain is the next economic evolutionary step to move past the flaws of the previous. And so uh, he links a Ray Dalio article here. As painful as this virus is, economic and civil unrest period is, do we need to get to the point of extreme pain where we all capitulate into the CBDC system? While I don't like it, I do see the pros and the cons. Is crypto being allowed and pumped by governments to make us accept CBDCs? So that's an interesting point to this. Cryptocurrencies obviously uh, being pumped. Of course, we know the market has been going up over the last uh, year and a half now, actually two years now, almost two years. We'll call it a year and a half for now, but uh, you know, we still, some are saying we still aren't at the top. And so could this be the plan to get more people uh, comfortable with cryptocurrencies and then usher in the era of CBDCs. Now it was interesting because I saw uh, XRP Darren also mentioned a point here that uh, I think is interesting. I agree with everything and will add that I think lockdowns are a way to control the velocity of money or inflation. If we get high CPI, we get a lockdown. So an interesting little tidbit there too, just uh, adding on to Tony's post. Now, 
Something else I wanted to bring to you guys, an older clip. This was the former SEC commissioner, Michael Pioar, and here he talks about crypto in 2018, okay? And just listen to what he has to say about Bitcoin. For your first question, whether or not there was a market reaction to the hearing last week, I don't know if that's a great question, but I do know when I was acting chairman, I mentioned there's, um, there, there's an ETF um, exchange traded fund um, that's um, under review right now by us. So what happened was during my acting chairmanship, the staff recommended that we deny it. And then the, 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 the folks that are involved in this that want to put Bitcoin into an ETF, they've appealed it to the commission. So now we have to decide it. And I can't talk about that specifically. But I do know that when staff denied it, the Bitcoin price went way down over the weekend. And man, these, these people, they hated me. They said it was all my fault and I'm supposed to be a free markets guy and all this stuff, right? And I thought it was kind of funny, but then I just heard yesterday, I guess it is, that um, the person in Korea who's in charge of regulating Bitcoin was found dead in his home. And so it's you know, probably a heart attack, but you never know, you know? <laughs> so this is former SEC Commissioner Michael Piwar talking about Bitcoin regulation in 2018 and... The guy that was in charge of the uh, Bitcoin ETF in South Korea was found dead in his home. He's saying, yeah, it was probably a coincidence, but you never know. I mean, we know the powers that be are not very happy at this notion of uh, Bitcoin becoming a currency and, uh, you know, in some countries, legal tender like in El Salvador. And so I feel like, you know, there is this very specific plan that they want to usher in along the lines of what Tony was talking about in this uh, tweet thread here. The CBDC system obviously ushering in central bank digital currencies, getting uh, the masses perhaps comfortable with traditional cryptocurrencies, trading cryptocurrencies. Then they're going to come in 2022, regulate the market, and the party will be over. Well, here's another point I wanted to mention. This one from Michael at Val 5 Links. If I predicted last year that China was going to be the big elephant in the room making some big moves, I think this year it's actually going to be the US. And guys, this is coming from the World Economic Forum's very own Sheila Warren. So let me read you guys a little bit of this. This was an interview I believe she had with Coindesk. While China made big moves in banning crypto this year, US lawmakers appear to be warming up to the industry, setting the stage for the next year. So this is just an interview. Some of Sheila Warren's responses with regards to uh, cryptocurrencies, the predictions for 2022, big moves out of the US. Policymaking takes a very long time, so I certainly would not predict that 2022 is the year that we see a lot of the policies enacted. So she's saying, you know, policies will come in 2022, but I do think that we're going to see maybe an uptick in the kind of hearings and activity that's happening within the U.S. government and U.S. regulators focusing on this space. She also says uh, down here with regards to CBDCs outside of China, I actually do think the EU could lap the U.S. in terms of issuance of digital coins. That's something to keep an eye on to see what happens there. And of course, the digital yuan getting more and more traction. We'll have to see what goes on with China and how China is getting to expand its use of digital yuan beyond the borders of China into a lot of other spaces. And what does that mean to accelerate maybe some of the movement of CBDCs or central bank digital currencies in this space? She talks a little bit about NFT NFTs as well. But down here, continued investments into blockchain and crypto. This is what I found very, very interesting coming from Sheila Warren, part of the World Economic Forum. We know World Economic Forum also did put out a report back in June of 2021 outlining six different cryptocurrencies that they see as uh, being part of a new financial system. One being XRP. We had XLM on the list, Cardano, Celo, Algorand, and Solana. Those were the six that the World Economic Forum specifically outlined in that document. I don't have that document up here at this moment, but uh, I have talked about it at length on this channel. I'll, uh, I'll see if I can find one of the more pertinent videos that I talked, uh, where I talked about that. And I'll link it up here in the top right-hand corner for you guys. So here's what she says. We're going to see more and more investment money flooding into this space. So with regards to investments in crypto and blockchain, more money flooding into this space, guys. In 2022, this coming from Sheila Warren from the World Economic Forum. So you gotta imagine, right, the market cap, we have seen this market cap 
as high as $3 trillion. Now it's back down to about $2.3 trillion. But Sheila Warren is saying it is going to grow in 2022. She goes on to say whether we get ETFs, kind of what those look like uh, that really start taking off, whether we see more SPACs or public companies in this space, we're going to see more and more companies move out of that very early sort of seed phase or token phase into something more baked and mature. And that's to have a tremendous implication for the job market. So also the job market here, the labor market moving into this industry and what that does overall for its valuation. More companies are going to come online, more tokenization is going to occur. We're going to see more value being spread over more blockchains. Of course, Ripple has that leg up. They've been in production for years now. And just a reminder to the XRP community, this was tweeted out by Matthew L-I-N-Y here on Twitter, plans within plans, a retweet from 2019, just demonstrating how big this really is and how interconnected Ripple is with uh, many of these different companies. Some of the partners of easyforex.com include Ripple, Nanopay, CoinX, and some others here. And just to demonstrate some of the partners that they are linked with, the Bankers Bank of Kentucky, Duke Credit Union, Star One Credit Union, Michigan State University, the Department of State, First National Bankers Bank, uh, First Data, NYU FCU, and the list goes on and on facilitates the international transfers, Fed Global, ACH, and blockchain, and foreign cash servicing of US government and 4,000 plus financial institutions. Guys, Ripple is a partner, this dating back from 2019, but I think it is important to note. And finally, from Jimmy Valley, who's predicting a potential $35,000 XRP. His company says this is consistent with what we're seeing as well. Retweeting out the ones tweet here. Here is what the one says. The real plan is to transition the world to a digital multi-reserve currency system, removing the need for one dominant currency and Nostro and Vostro accounts. Obviously, just by the sounds of that, it sounds like it will be replaced by XRP. This could be possibly via the use of a digital exchange currency between central bank digital currencies. All nations, beginning with mostly the larger economies, will develop their own CBDCs, but financially aligned national blocks will share messaging systems such as SWIFT and CHIPS. Russia and China, for example, have been selling US debt back to the Fed since at least 2020, uh, which coincides with lockdowns. Why? The repatriation of the debt from abroad without halting U.S. commerce would almost certainly cause hyperinflation in the West, leading to a domino effect collapsing the world economy, considering USD is still currently the world reserve currency. So this is the problem we're facing, and they're saying maybe there will not even be a world reserve currency and there will be a just a digital currency that would help facilitate the transactions between nations CBDCs. It goes on to say, I do not claim to have all the answers, but I have researched this subject extensively, and this theory is the only practical real world answer I have come up with for everything we are experiencing. Consistent with Val Hill Capital's findings as well, guys. Meanwhile, we got Sheila Warren saying money will be pumping into cryptocurrency and blockchain markets in 2022, not to mention all the partnerships that Ripple has been forging over the last several years, including ones to the US government. So although we see down days every now and then, you know, the up days, I think the green days, those huge green days, are still ahead of us. That's just my opinion, but I want to hear what you guys think. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Like the video if you like the content I'm providing. I always love hearing your comments. See you in the next one, guys.